Hi there, and thanks for joining me on our first episode of Home Sales, Your Next Move. Whether it's investing, buying your own home, or simply keeping up with property in general, you'll find all you need to know on this show. By the way, I'm Bradley Beer. I'm the CEO of the BMT Group, incorporating homesales.com.au, BMT tax depreciation, and BMT insurance. But I'm also a keen and avid property investor myself, with lots of experience to share with you over the coming shows. So let's take a look at what's coming up in our first episode. Tara Bradbury gives us the latest property news update. Ty Blanche will give us a unique perspective of the commercial property industry, including thriving development areas and external trends influencing the commercial market. And in our segment called Your Home Sales Buy a Toolkit, we look at the property calculator. First up though, let's cross to Tara Bradbury from the BDM Academy. She'll be bringing our news and auction roundup to you every week. Let's see what she has for this week. Most capital sitting dwelling prices saw a decline across the country over the June quarter, but not in all areas. Data contained in the Real Estate Market Facts Report from the Real Estate Institute of Australia shows house prices dropped 0.8 of a percentage point and units dropped 0.3 of a percentage point across Australian capital cities. According to the REIA president, Malcolm Gunning, this was indicative of a shift in some of Australia's significant markets. The weighted average median price for capital housing declined to $765,980 over that quarter, with declines in Sydney, Melbourne, Perth, Darwin and Canberra. Units dropped to $590,935 with declines in Sydney, Perth, Adelaide and Canberra. Canberra had the largest decline in house prices and Adelaide had the largest decline in units. Several experts believe that Australia's place for investors is wanting to maximise their wealth creation in the following opportunities. The lacklustre performance of the big markets in the past months and many investors are looking for regional areas as an alternative. Experts remind investors that there is more to Australia than just Sydney and Melbourne. In fact, outside of these slowing property markets, investment could be as lucrative as ever. The Perth rental market continues to show signs of improvement with vacancy falling to 4.5% in August, the lowest since April 2015. Carmel Gardner from Amor Guard said, although it is still high, we are in a much healthier position for everybody than we ever have been before. Prices are still good for renters, but also showing a rise for landlords. Now to foreign investment. Australia commercial property. Japanese investors poured $1.6 billion into commercial real estate last year, and the buying is tipped to continue as they seek out higher growth markets. The new cohort of Japanese companies is seeking out higher growth markets overseas, and most are looking for investment grade stock. The spending in 2017 was more than three times their total investment in the previous eight years, and agent reports that the demand is still strong. Real estate agent JAL said the Japanese outbound investment has grown steadily over the years, with the most focus on the core asset, hotels and large-scale developments. The new wave of investment started in the US, but the focus has more recently turned to Australia. To finish up, we'll take a quick look at our changing finance market. Tough lending regulations are hitting investors hard. APRA reports that approvals for interest-only loans took a 54.9% dive in the last quarter. Interest-only loans represent 16.2% or 61.2 billion of new home loans approved, according to the latest data from APRA. Investment home loans also dropped by 12.4% over the quarter, representing 3.1% of new home loan approvals, the total of 117.5 billion. In total, 94.6 billion loans were approved in June 2018, with 4.1% declining from 98.7 billion in the previous corresponding period. So that's all for me, Brad. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks, Tara. It'll be great to get all the latest news from you each week, so I'll see you again soon. When we talked about what we should have on this show, we thought it would be a good idea to harness some expertise of some of the leaders in the property industry and interview them so that they can share their expertise with you. First cab off the rank is Ty Blanche from LJ Hooker Commercial Central Coast. I chatted to Ty about commercial real estate and he had some great insights. 
Welcome Ty. 27 years, a bit of a range in residential and commercial. You would have seen a lot of changes over that time and now you're also a bit of an investor yourself Ty. Any predictions on upcoming changes in technology that will impact the property industry in the, in the near future? Technology has grossly um, affected the actual real estate industry itself, obviously with different systems and different formats and bases that real estate agents have used as CMAs, for example, over the last 20, 30 years. When I started, uh, honestly, the office that I worked out of had a photocopier. We had a typewriter. We didn't have a computer and nobody had mobile phones. So the changes that I've seen in technology and where it's going now, as people get more technology to help them to do things, we're doing more things sooner and better, but we're also competing with each other. So everybody's got access to pretty close to the same technology, which means that the whole industry is developing at a pace that's far superior to in 1992. Yeah, things look in our industry, the, what we do have changed substantially over the time I've been there as well. You know, we, um, I've seen many different things and a lot of similarities over time. Ty, some of the, the key contacts that should be around a, a property investor, a commercial property investor, when they're looking to get into the market, um, what, what do you see some of those as? I think that that's um, obviously different depending on what part of the real estate industry we're actually talking about. So if you're a first time home investor, you really need a good bank manager or financial um, provider that's going to hold your hand through that as well as maybe mum and dad sort of helping uh, until you get to the point where you feel comfortable with making the purchase and then at that point you'd need all of the different property professionals that you would normally have such as pest and building inspectors, conveyances or solicitors. I always you know, suggest that solicitors are more important with commercial property because in commercial property transactions there's normally leases annexed to contracts that need to be carefully scrutinised and also with commercial property you don't need to have pest and building reports. Most of the guys that buy multi-million dollar uh, precast concrete and portable steel frame buildings from me don't actually ask for a pest or building report, but the guy who's buying his first $260,000 house that's you know 40 years old and made out of fibro needs to have it checked out. Uh, external trends you're seeing in your local market affecting the commercial market at all? With external, um, I believe that there's obviously inherent features to a property and external features to a property. Those external features to a property and its value are determined by local, statewide, national and international factors. They're all things that are going to impact on the next five to seven years, in my opinion. And on the back of the external factors, there are any particular areas that the commercial property is thriving around your areas at the moment and a bit about why? There's no land left on the central coast, very, very little. Uh, it's a big issue. Employment lands are what drive employment, obviously, in an area. And we've got one of the fastest growing populations in New South Wales as far as growth over the next 20 to 30 years. So we need those employment lands. I've been telling local and state government for the last five years that they need to open up more employment lands. And not only me, but it's more than that. It's actually for the area, the community. Um, so that's an area that's actually become quite interesting to watch because land prices have gone from $65, $75 a square metre in this business park to now $200 and, and plus per square metre in a short period of time, really, over the last sort of 18 to 20 years. And more recently, they've gone from $150, $160 to $250 to $300 a square metre. Interesting to see the, the surveys being done uh, and there's a lot of time that the local people involved in that industry can see that there's a future problem coming, but uh, uh, hopefully some, some work to be done with that. From your side, dealing with the people, the owners and the tenants, um, what are the, I guess, the important things to be aware of in regards to depreciation? It's very important. I would put my hand on my heart and say that I honestly believe that depreciation is one of the most important and overlooked aspects of property investment in the country. Um, like a lot of things, once you actually know what you're doing and you can see the real benefits with it, you understand that there's an important reason why you have to break things down into their uh, components so that you can see the rates of depreciation you're going to get. For example, in a commercial office fit out, there is a swag of things that will get a much higher rate of depreciation than a precast concrete building. One may have to be done in a certain method, a straight line method. One may 
have, as we have at the moment, exemptions for things under $20,000. So if you go and buy a, you know, a $20,000 boardroom table, you can have that as an instant write-off, which is, a, once you know what you're doing, that's a very, very important thing um, to help a business get ahead while that is on offer. What I have found over the years is that if you just, you don't force it on people, but you just keep sending them the information and telling them about depreciation and explaining how important it is in maximising their returns. In residential property, when you purchase a property, typically it's going to be based on emotion. It doesn't really matter even if it's an investment, you're trying to positively gear it, negatively gear it, whatever you're trying to do. There's going to be some level of emotion there, the suburb that you buy in, the street that you buy in, what the house or the flat or the unit looks like. With commercial property, it's, it's much more um, mathematical and it's, it's much more detached and commercial property investors are looking at comparing properties based on primarily a net return per annum. So if you can affect that net return per annum by doing something as, as simple as getting a depreciation schedule that maximises the amount of depreciation that you get, it can affect an 8% yield by sometimes 0 0.4, 0 0.3, 0 0.5%. And that is a massive amount of money that you are then capitalising on after you've purchased the property at that percentage yield, that return is affected, so. I'm um, interested in some of your thoughts there, Ty. Look, it's been great having you today. Thank you very much for, for some of your insights into the local Central Coast market. Some really good information from Ty, and if you need any help, you can catch him at LJ Hooker Commercial on the Central Coast. In the next segment, I'm going to be showing you a really useful and interesting tool that you can use to help you on your property buying journey. We're looking at a new tool called PropCalc. Exclusive to home sales, it allows buyers to calculate the real cost of owning investment properties, including the cash flow required to hold the property each week. It's free of charge to buyers and investors, and it will definitely help you make informed purchase, especially in the current market where rising prices can leave buyers struggling to pay off their loans. Having worked with hundreds of thousands of investors across Australia, we understand the true value that research can give to home buyers in helping them make educated decisions. While most buyers are focused on the selling price of properties, it's even more important to consider the ongoing weekly or monthly costs of owning a property, and if you decide that cost is something you can maintain. Let's take a look at what it can do. When you're looking to buy a property, there's a lot to consider. PropCalc, the new tool from homesales.com.au can help. This one-of-a-kind research tool allows you to input purchase costs as well as ongoing expenses so you can accurately calculate how much it will cost to own your property. Plus, you can upload photos and notes about multiple properties and compare property results to make an informed purchase decision. All this information moves seamlessly from your desktop to the app so you have all the information you need on the go. Use homesales.com.au and our one-of-a-kind tool PropCalc to access the most comprehensive property data on the market. Homesales.com.au, your next move. As you can see, this calculator will tell you what each property will cost or make each week, month or year. If it's an investment property, the app also shows whether it will be positively or negatively geared and even the depreciation deductions you can expect from the property. It then gives you an after-tax result you can then compare the results of multiple properties side by side to see which property is the most cost effective. You can also upload your own property, photos and notes from inspections to store all your research in the one place. Ideal for buyers who are inspecting and comparing multiple properties. You can find the calculator at homesales.com.au. Well, that brings us to the end of our first show. You'll be able to catch me every week for the latest Home Sales Your Next Move episode. If you'd like to keep up to date with our latest resources or check out our website, go to homesales.com.au or follow us on social media accounts on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and LinkedIn. Thanks for tuning in and see you again next week.